so far, but thank you, Scientific Committee, for inviting me at this meeting. I'm very pleasure to be here because, uh, so is, uh, I'm very happy to be here, no pleasure, because it's the first meeting in presence uh, after two years. Very, very bad. Thank you, Professor Fada, because I put me after this presentation. So it's a clear for the auditorium the difference <laughs> between me and Professor Bear. Thank you, Guido. Poi ci vediamo dopo. I have to speech. My speech is uh, the experience of application of a TPS in urinary cytology. Um, I very lucky. I was very lucky because uh, with the Professor Fad, that is my boss in university uh, in 2016, I follow all the work about uh, this uh, uh, this book. So in particular, the chapter high grade urothelial carcinoma. My experience is okay. I show you my experience. I try to show you at some point that uh, I think that the TPS 3.0 is coming. Uh, now is very, very uh, near to here. What kind of experience? There is a several experience. The experience is based on the routine practice. So there is a difference in terms of number of patients, uh, type of patients, uh, type of sample. This is my uh, experience in my institute. The number of the cases is uh, very similar from 20 to 16 uh, until now. The number is uh, 2,500 uh, 2, on average. May patients for uh, 78 patients uh, are patients in therapy. And all the small part is patients with uh, early symptoms in Maturia. What kind of therapy? Therapy. Seven percent with therapy for high grade urothelial carcinoma. BCZ, mitomycin. So there is a two, two techniques not very common that I show you, and there's synergo therapy. Only 30 patients are in therapy for low grade urothelial carcinoma. The type of sample, uh, then four or five percent of the bladder washing, 35 is a void urine and 50% uh, is urine from selective urine and uh, only a very small part is, uh, the point is, uh, uh, so the very small part, oh, this one, okay. The very small part is a helial brother. Patients in follow up after, after systemic, for my opinion, is this the, the more difficult uh, cytology. My experience is based on patients who follow up and the therapy and the selective urine. First question is that TP has for me a learning curve and the reproducibility. In my experience, uh, is the TPS easily applicable with the result comparable to, this, to those that uh, described in the first edition? After five years, I see that is okay as possible. It's easier to apply. So this is the number of the cases in a gray zone. I think that this classification is a good classification. It's important to analyze the gray zone. This is the number of IOC and suspicious high grade urotelic in every single year. So the average is uh, for the IOC 3 to 5 percent and the suspicious high grade carcinoma 1 to 3 percent. Very, very short level. This is the concept that the Professor Bale said before. The rate in the first edition is a 2 to 31, and the second is 50%, uh, is okay, is good. Is, uh, the learning curve is very quickly because every single here the same, is not to decrease uh, the number of uh, the suspicious case. Cytological preparation, that's a very important point. My question is, uh, is the TPS a classification influenced by cytological preparation? I don't know if uh, you use a thin prep layer or cytospin method. In the book uh, is reported that the 45, uh, no, 50, 55, so more than 50% 50, 50 of the laboratory in the world use the thin prep or the, the thin layer, and so the rest the cytospin. But it's important, the preparation is a very good point, this important point. In a paper that I published in 2016, I analyzed the uh, compared the cytospin and the liquid-based cytologist using the TPS. This is the first year 
21-16, the year of the publication of TPS. This is the risk of high grade carcinoma in every single category. So for uh, I would see is 80-20%. Uh, in the suspicious high grade carcinoma in 2016, the name is the AUGH. As a member of for whole the classification preview. So this is a 15 to 70 hundred percent, 77 percent. So this is the result. If you use the thipper method, the uh, AUCI is, uh, uh, is negative biopsy. Subsequent to our diagnosis is uh, 80 percent, 80, 70 percent. It's very, very high. Very small the percentage of high grade uterine carcinoma after this diagnosis. But if I use uh, the cytospin method, the situation change. The IOC is a 50% of the cases is negative, and the one third of cases is positive for high grade carcinoma. So I conclude that if you use uh, the Timper method, this uh, do the uh, atypical uterine cell category seems to correlate with negative histology biopsy or low grade urethral carcinoma. It's not important in the, how the, the suspicious high grade carcinoma in, with the impredon in 50% of cases identify high grade urethral carcinoma. If you use the cytospin, the difference in terms of uh, risk of biopsy, subsequent biopsy of high grade urethral carcinoma is not significantly correlated. So there's a problem maybe for if you use a cytospin in this grade zone category. So is intuitive. The liquid-based preparation reduces all the feature, all the, the, the obstacle to distinguish uh, the nuclear detail. So it's easier to find, to make a diagnosis between IOC or IOCH. But that's a very important point. If you use the cytospin, you can make a diagnosis of high-grade urotelic carcinoma or negative high grade carcinoma. It's not important in this category if you use one or the other method, but it's important in the grade zone in the paper published in, 20 and in 2016. This is the conclusion. So I think that it is important that in the cytology report should be present not you in the cytology classification, but it's my opinion, the cytology method of preparation to clarify to urologists if the, you use if the percentage that I show you. And about the therapy? I think it is a very important point. My patients in more than 70% are patients in therapy with high-grade urethral carcinoma. And the cytology is very important in the follow-up of these patients. So the question is, for me, does the TPS classification retain its clinical ability to identify high-grade urethral carcinoma recurrence in patients in therapy? That's an important point for us. It's an important point for urologists. In 2018, my group published this paper. We analyzed the risk, I'm oh sorry, the risk of malignancy, a typical arterial source, in these patients treated with a very uh, not common therapy, chemohypertermia and electro drug administration. It's a not simple therapy, but it's important to, 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 to know that in Edna, there is drug solution and magnetic field for the patients. And this is a, a polycaparitabrinia, this is a drug solution, mitomycina hated. So this port, important point. This therapy is a very important in patients with high grade urethral carcinoma refractory to BCG or not responded to BCG. The, these patients are candidate to cystectomy. So the patients can for cystectomy. The last step, the last choice to avoid the cystectomy is uh, represented by this therapy. The focus of the therapy is to increase the permeability of the blood mucosa uh, by the mitomycin with electric field, and so with it, uh, when the mitomycin is aided. So this is my this is an example of my of, of my um, cases. This is a very very is only one cell in patients in therapy with high grade urethral carcinoma. In this slide, I show you three or maybe is five to tell cell present in the, on the slide, okay, in those sample. This is the situation, very atypical cell for me, is a typical, it's not defined, but it's a hyperchromatic nuclei, nuclear membrane irregular, so coarse chromatin, 
but the, cit the nuclear cytoplasmic ratio is not valuable. This is a degenerative cytoplasm. So for me, this is a, a cancer, okay? This is a, because of the, for me, the degenerative change is due to the therapy, but this is another example. Another example, okay? Is it, for, is it an aplastic cancer, but not is possible to evaluate the nucleocytoplasma ratio. I put my diagnosis is suspicious high grade urotelial carcinoma. In this patient, it's possible to see for me high grade urotelial carcinoma because the number of cells is uh, too low, but is the patient uh, has a history of high grade urotelial carcinoma. But if you follow the TPS first edition, uh, the suspicious high grade urotelial carcinoma should not render on degenerate cells. This is an important point. So all my diagnosis of suspicious high grade in this case become a typical urotelial cells. But what's happening if you examine the results of this study? If you, in this line, this is the cytological diagnosis excluding the generative change present in therapy in these patients. If you, see, if you need that, the histology biopsy for how she done cytological diagnosis is very, very high, 66%. If you use the, the, my diagnosis, including these cells, it's very dangerous, uh, but in including these cells, the results change drastically. It's more and more, uh, is in the limit for the first edition and second edition for the risk of uh, a high grade urotelial carcinoma. So my conclusion is, this is the for uh, MD the same, the same for the, the, the same uh, um, therapy. I conclude that the degenerative urotelial cells may be physiological consequence of a therapy, of this kind of therapy. I don't know if a BCG or mitomycin, but if this therapy is possible, I think that the peris should be addressed at this point. The therapy is an important point. In such case, is a necessary ancillary method. Fish, we use another method. I use another method, so I show you. But it's important for distinguish this cell. This is a little part in the second edition. A small chapter, but very, very interesting. Is the future clinical research niche? This is a preparation of TPS 3.0. One, the question is: study the impact of degenerative change on the diagnosis of eye gate with carcinoma. This is the case. Now, so the genetic change is induced by therapy. I think that the 3.0 is coming. The, the data in the literature show that you have to stress this point. And from a molecular aspect, the TPS category is only cytological category, is only morphological category, clinical category, or is it a molecular category? In this study, in very, very recently, in 20, 2021, our group studied this uh, uh, methylation in the urine cytology, the methylation study. It's an ancillary test, uh, different from fish, but we use this, and so the result is very good for me, very similar to fish. The methylation, in general, is a epigenetic mechanism involved in the oncogenic process. The test uses uh, analyzed five methylation biomarker. Not too much, 15 score, oh, sorry. The level of methylation produces a score. If the score is uh, less than 16, the test is negative, 60. If more than 60, the test is positive. And if the score is more than 19, the test, the diagnosis of high-grade urocarcinoma is possible. This is the result. The score increase starting from a category non-negative for high-grade urotary carcinoma to category high-grade urotary carcinoma. And the score, the level of methylation, seems to correlate in statistically way for every single category. So this category is not only the cytological category, maybe it's molecular category. And so the TPS identify molecular category starting a cytological feature. That's a question is important. This is dramatic. In Incredible result. This is a question. And so, the point. This is the point after uh, we discussed it. The suspicious high grade of carcinoma and high grade of carcinoma, for me, I, I, I concluded that should be remain separate. 
between this category is not only a question of number of soul. Maybe it's a question of different level of DNA methylation. So should we remain separate? It's very, very different from how we see the level of methylation decrease. So this molecular marker identify the gray zone and indicate that this category should remain separate. The same chapter. The same chapter, this is an ancillary test. And so in the TPS 3.0, there is a explore the use of fish, only fish spoke, not methylation study. So it's not important. Ancillary test is important. Molecular test can improve the skill to cytopathology resolving this problem. Investigate the test could be added to define criteria of specific TIG morphology in addition to morphology feature. I think that the methylation pattern in this study, you can give a little answer of this question. Okay, the ancillary test could resolve this problem. The other, the other point, the stress that the author, the author, the therapist say that it needs the search. So you clarify this point, determine whether the association of suspicious high-grade carcinoma and positive high-grade carcinoma cytological category confirmed with high-grade urinary carcinoma, as our case, is statistically different enough to justify keeping those categories separate. This paper demonstrates this. It's clear. If this is the point that you have to stress to, to answer this point, the answer is present now, not in the future, now. Unusual feature. During my year, uh, during the, the, my examination, the unit practice, uh, I find these cases. The 50% of these cases is this. So very, very big nuclei. Incre uh, uh, the, the nuclear ratio increase, nuclear membrane uh, irregular, cytochromatic cores at the periphery of the nucleus. And so the present mixed with this also with degenerative feature, but no, very suggestive for neoplastic cells. Th this criteria is uh, uh, present. These cells are not neoplastic cells for TPS because we have the hypochromasia. In first edition, the hypochromasia is not considered, should be eliminated from the diagnosis. But the case is present. I show a lot of the cases. Not a lot, of, uh, five to 50 percent of the case. But this is mixed, hypochromatic cells, hyperchromatic, hyperchromatic, very big, huge hyperchromatic cells. Hyperchromatic cells with degenerative feature near this hypochromatic cells. I published this paper in 2018. I tried to publish this paper in a lot of, pa of journals, but this data is not, not interesting for us. In 20, 200, but this is a, the, the, the life, this is academic life. You know, but this is a very small, very small and very insignificant uh, paper. The impact is uh, horrible. This is my last choice to publish this. So, Okay, it was accepted. This is the, my conclusion. The conclusion is the hypochromasia is not including the criterion malignancy described. Okay, I described. Um, and the conclusion is uh, hypochromatic nuclei can be diagnostic for high grade urocarcinoma, even though the absence of hypochromasia. But we do have the, either, uh, the, the other uh, uh, feature. High nuclear cytoplasm ratio, irregular nuclear outline, and cold chromatin. You can make a diagnosis of high grade carcinoma if you have the hypochromatic cells. Five years later. This is a very good group. This is a group of uh, Bambuchan and Vojtic. So, the same report. Five years later. This is, a, uh, this is a one important. A journal. This is academy life. This is a normal in, in our in our field. Publish this, so it's okay. It's a good. Now it's good. After four 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 years, this is the picture of this uh, the figure of this paper. You can see the uh, hypochromatic nuclei and so mix it with hyperchromatic neoplastic cells. 
In the TPS second edition, there is a small chapter in the chapter with the, the hypochromasia. It is uh, clear. Hypochromasia, cell with the chromatin nucleocam, with the nocile, the same sentence. And so, lucky, this is my work after four years. <laughs> it's present in this, uh, in this uh, uh, book. This is uh, normal, okay? Well, I think that this classification is one of the best classification for your anisetology. Why? Because it is easier to apply. Why? Because it is a solid base from a record point of view. The curve lengthening is very short. But the most important point that uh, this classification is not for me, is not for us, if you ask cytologists or pathologists. This classification is for urologists. An answer to the question of urologists at, at the end for the patients. Thank you.